Hey guys, how is it going and welcome back to another episode here for more Pod Lemon Omar content. Today we are gonna talk about how you can actually optimize your winnings and make as much money as possible when you play poker. Now there are some things that are on top of everyone's mind when we think about how to improve your bottom line. For example, work on your game. Be focused and well rested when you sit down at the table. What is the skill level that you have and how good are you actually at the table? Those have all a big impact on your bottom line. But there are some other topics that are also holding a very big effect on your bottom line and how likely it is that you make as much money as you can. But many of these topics are very undervalued in my opinion. And today I want to shine some light on one of them and that is where you should actually play as a poker player if you're an online player. Now, I've been dealing with this for years as well and I didn't take it that serious, especially in the beginning of my poker career. Now, over the years, I learned more about it and I spoke with a lot of poker players about this topic and today I want to share some ideas about it with all of you. So make sure guys to stick around until the very end because we're going to not only talk about how to do it, but also why it is so important to think about this topic. If you guys like the content, make sure to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. And in regards to my YouTube channel, um, I'm currently sitting at 4,270 subscribers. And the goal for myself is to bring this subscriber number up to 5,000 by the end of the year. So we have around two more months. So guys, if you are not subscribed yet, please click that subscribe button. That would be highly appreciated by myself. And for future videos, you will get notified when I have a new video posted. So please help me out here. Get this number to 5K subscribers. And we're going to get then right into the video. So where you should play as an online poker and why it is so important. Guys, what you see in front of you is pokerscout.com. This is a site that basically tracks all the online poker operators and allow you to see what the traffic is on all these sites. And you can see that the most amount of traffic on basically any of these sites is on GG Poker and on PokerStars. You see them here on top. These are the biggest operators online. You probably know them. You probably, I mean, you definitely know them. You probably play on them. I mean, it's very, very likely that you're actually playing on there. And that is how the industry is set up, right? There are some sites that have a big name, a big brand, do a lot of marketing, have a lot of people standing behind them to promote the brand. And therefore, a lot of players will actually jump into the games and play there. It's the site with the most traffic, so it's very easy to just open up the lobby and sit down and play your game. But the question really is like, is this what you should do? And is this the best option that you, or the best decision basically that you can make that is in line with the bigger vision that you have? And that is to do as good as possible and to win as much money as you can as an online poker player. And to come to an answer for that, we have to think broader about like, what is it that we aim for and what are the options out there? What are different things that have an impact on your bottom line? And in the beginning, I already addressed a couple of them, right? But there are more that ha will have a very big impact. It's not only about your skill level and it's not only about um, how well rested you are or how well focused you are. That's not all there is really. It, it has a big impact, but there's way more. There's a quote from Daniel Negreanu that I heard not too long ago, really, in a podcast. And I think there was a podcast with, with Lex Friedman. And Daniel Negreanu basically said in the podcast that you can be the seventh best poker player in the world Literally, you are the seventh best player in the world. You, you beat everyone else, really. But if you play with the top six in the world and you are seven-handed on a table, 
you will be the sucker. You are the worst player out there. And what he basically means by that is that it doesn't always matter how good you are. If you can get yourself in the right games, the likelihood of making a lot of money is often much higher than if you are maybe a very, very good player, but play in extremely tough games. Think about someone like Dan Bilzerian, right? That guy, I mean, he is definitely not the best poker player in the world, but he probably made more money than some of the very best poker players in the world. And that is because he is having access to some great games. So when you decide where you want to play as a poker player, not only think about what is the most obvious decision and what is the operator that has the most traffic or where the software is the most convenient. Think of it much broader. You want to play against weak opponents. And sometimes that means you have to step out of the big operators like GG Poker or Poker Stars because on other networks, smaller networks often, and sometimes the software, for example, is not as convenient, but the opposition that you face is way weaker. Now, there are more things to consider on top of that even, and that is the rake that you're paying on each of these sites. Let me show you a quick and simple Excel sheet that I made. Let me actually um, block it here. I think that was... No, hold on. <laughs> I like this. Okay, so this is a simple Excel sheet. Um, what we see is the amount of rake in big blind that you're paying on three different stake levels. So PLO 50, PLO 200, or PLO 2000 on these different poker sites. And we'll go through them just to get a, a fair understanding about what do sites actually ask or what is the rake that you have to pay on these sites. Let's start with PLO 50 on the left. In green, it means the rake will be lower. The more red it becomes, the rake is higher. So. At PLO 50, we can see that the rake that you are supposed to pay is the lowest on GG. Two big blinds. That is it. On PokerStars, it's four big blinds. On many of the other operators, like iPoker or the App Games, for example, it is six big blinds. But on Ignition, it's even eight big blinds. So there's a widespread of fees that you're paying depending on the operator. So let's imagine you're watching this video now and you're actually playing on Ignition PLO 50. That might ring some alarm bells for you or it should at least because you're playing four times as much or you're paying four times as much rake as you would do for example in GG Poker. If you look into PLO 200, you will see that the rake gets lower and that's how it's generally worked. The higher the stakes you play, the lower the rake becomes in terms of big blind that you're paying. For example, on PLO 200, you will see that the rake is the highest on the app games. It's three big blinds. The rake is the lowest on PokerStars, 1.4. If you look into PLO 2000, so much higher stakes, you'll see that the rake suddenly becomes way, way lower. On all, the operators, on all the operators, it is around 0 0.2, 0 0.15 really, so fairly low, except for two operators, and that is GG Poker, where the rake is 1.5 big blind, and on the app games, where the rake is two big blinds. So what can we do with all of this? First of all, we can now say that, okay, on side X, the rake is the lowest and on side Y, the rake is the highest for this stake. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you should now play on that side. For example, on GG, let's say you're playing PLO 50 on GG Poker. Yes, the rake is the lowest. You're paying two big blinds. It's much lower than the other games, for example. But there are other things to come into consideration, right? We already spoke about it. Like how is the opposition that you're playing? Are you playing against a lot of good players, a lot of weak players, or a lot of very weak players? 
And on top of that, like, what are additional benefits that you get on a certain site? On GG Poker, the rakeback program is, in my opinion at least, questionable. Like, it's very unclear what it actually is and how much you're getting back. And as far as I understand it, the more you play and the better you are, the more likely it is that the amount of rakeback you're getting becomes much lower. So, in terms of percentage, how much rakeback can you get on GG Poker if you are like someone that plays a good amount of hands and maybe is a winning player? I don't know. Could be like 20%, maybe 30%. Maybe that's already on the high end. I also heard, yeah, I think like 20% for a lot of people is realistic there. Maybe it's a little bit higher. I'm not sure. Um, so, the amount of rake that you're paying after getting some rake back is definitely a little bit lower than two big blinds. But not a lot. Now, if you look into the other sides, yes, you're paying a lot more rake. Absolutely. But let's take an example, for example, the app games, right? You're paying six big blind. And that is the amount that you're paying to the operator. Now, I know that on the app games, you can get like around... 30%, maybe even 40%, probably somewhere in between there in terms of rake back. So let's say you can get like two big blinds back already. So that would bring the net rake that you're paying at to four big blinds. Now on top of that, on the app games, the opposition is generally much softer than in other sites, like for example, PokerStars or GG Poker. And that is because a lot of the regulars and a lot of players that want to make volume and that are maybe professionals, they play on sites where it's very convenient. They can make a lot of volume. And they don't want to think about like setting up all these tables, making sure that we're taking care of some of the things that are maybe a little bit annoying. But on the app games, for example, like the, the opposition is weaker. So you can definitely increase your win rate in my opinion significantly by playing on there instead of maybe staying to play on a site like PokerStars or GG Poker. Now how is it on the other sites? Party Poker, Winamax, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I haven't done a research for all of these sites. But I know and that's really what it comes down to today is that it's it's way more important to make a conscious decision about this than you might think at first glance. Like, there's a lot that comes into play. And yes, some sites have a little bit more, take a little bit more time to set it up. Again, thought, think for example about the app games. Yes, um, it's definitely less convenient in a way. Um, maybe the games run not all the time. And deposit or withdrawal Options are limited, for sure. But if you can get a decent amount of rake back and the opposition is extremely weak, well, maybe it is actually a decent option, even if you play low stakes or mid stakes. All I'm saying here is I'm trying to open up your eyes, guys. Now, there are more things that you want to consider even because we spoke about the opposition, the rake, the rake back. Um... I mean, skill level obviously plays an impact, but what else has a role when it comes to... Let me actually remove this. What else plays a role when you make a decision? Well, it's obviously what format are you playing? If you're an online player, you can play... Let's say there is four card PLO. So we have four card, which is what most people play, most likely I expect, that are watching this video. Then there is five card, a more popular game, definitely. Um, more and more people jumping into it. Also more options available slowly. Then there's even six card, which slowly becomes more popular as well, I would say. It's a game that is not available on many sites, but there are some options. Or there are obviously people that play MTTs. And if you play tournaments, you actually cannot see it, but it's there, MTTs. <laughs> um, 
MTTs, of course, you might also be a little bit more limited because you wanna, if you play MTTs, you wanna play on sites where there are big MTTs with high guarantees, right? That is what you want. You wanna give yourself a chance to make a big score. So on top of thinking about all the other stuff and all the other things that we discussed earlier today, you are probably limited based on what you're playing. So let's say you are someone that plays MTTs. You probably end up playing on GG or on Pokestars. That's probably what it's going to be. And maybe for MTTs it's fine, right? I'm not an MTT player. And I'm not sure exactly how the rake is, but what I heard is that that's definitely good. So probably a good option. But if you play on the other sides, like four cards, obviously it's available everywhere. So you can play this like everywhere, every side. Doesn't matter. Five cards. Five card is not available everywhere, but it becomes more and more. At least I don't think it's available everywhere. Like you can play on GG. A lot of action there. You can play on stars, but I don't think there's a lot of five card action on stars. Uh, you can play it on the app games for sure. There's a lot of action there. And the other sides, I don't think there is five card. Maybe there is. I'm not sure. Then there's six card, which there's action on Poker Stars. And there's action on the app games. So. You are limited based on the game that you're playing. Now, what you want to think about in addition to this is that if you play four card, you have to realize that new games often get, or new games are often new opportunities as well, right? So if you play only four card, it might be reasonable or optional to consider also playing five card, for example. Maybe the opposition on average is weaker, even though you're also not an expert. But there are most likely, maybe, more people that like to gamble, maybe, because everyone has more cards in their hands. So the effect is that people like to play even more hands, which increases even more if you decide to jump into six card. But... What I'm trying to say is that if you widen your options, not only in terms of one format that you're playing, either of these, but also in terms of the side, you are very, very limited. Or you not limited, like if you widen the option, you simply are more flexible and you can get into more games. So, guys, I, I hope that by talking about this specific topic that... It makes you aware that there are way more options than just jumping into the games. And let's say, I'm pretty sure that 75% or more of the people that are watching this, they are actually playing on, let me actually, can I get this? Yeah. No, this doesn't work. I think 75% of the players, they are playing on either of these two sides. GG Poker or Pokestars. That's really what it comes down to. And you want to question that always. You want to think about it. You want to see what other options are out there, what different formats are out there. And even if the rake is higher on some of the other sides, maybe, there is still the option to give it a, sh to give it a shot, right? Because maybe, maybe the win rate and the opposition, the opposition is so much weaker and the win rates are so much higher that it will make up for the fact that you have to play like one or two big blinds more in rake. So guys, keep it in mind. If you like the format, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up again. I do want to get my account up to 5k subscribers by the end of the month. So please subscribe. Guys, thank you very much. Stay tuned until the end of the month because Black Friday is coming on the PLO Mastermind. We're going to have massive discounts. So if you want to Follow that if you want to stay active, then jump into plomastermind.com, head over to the site, stay tuned on what is coming, follow me on YouTube or on my Instagram account if you want to see my day-to-day -day life, head over to Instagram. Guys, thank you very much for watching or run out. This is Luke.
Catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.